Greetings, survivors and friends. If you're hearing this message, then congratulations. You survived 2021. Well done, you. Although, depending on when this was recorded, I may not have. At the very least, it was a good run. And so I think it would be a nice idea to take a look back on everything that happened to Rust in 2021. And maybe even what's coming in 2022. Why not? Yes. No. Oh, and if I am dead, you'll find the money stashed in a small metal box that I buried just under the little bridge in... Rust started the year strong, and thanks to exposure from some big streamers, it became flavour of the month on Twitch. Some people were even playing it. In fact, the player base doubled within four days, and because the big streamers had been getting on so well with the OG ones, coachloads of fresh-faced, green-under-the-armpits noobs shuffled eagerly onto servers, expecting wall-to-wall unicorn-flavoured ice cream and the most wholesomest, friendliest survival experience known to man. An illusion that stayed believable until they met something that moved. Hilarity ensued. Still, at least there were Twitch drops now, such as a sofa, a hobo barrel, and a totally not watch to win door with a see-through bit, which could all be yours for having a Twitch window open in the background for a few hours. Oh yeah, and of course a bunch of skins for streamers who'd been playing the game for a whole week! Wow! Also, for the first time in years, maybe decades, Rust's filthy blueprints were finally wiped due to the recent introduction of tech trees, which happened at the end of 2020 and so on in this video. Thanks to the enormous swollen mass of Rust virgins who discovered their unicorn ice cream did in fact taste of dog poo and betrayal, February saw the introduction of a new softcore game mode for people who felt the normal mode was a bit too hard and was hurting their fee feet. Features included being able to spawn in a safe space, a mean zone, and a rust and found so you could reclaim your pointless tat without being triggered. An emotional support bore was also teased but never made it in, Aww. but that's okay because a whole shed load of selfless long time players started popping onto softcore servers in order to help noobs understand the game. Drone marketplaces were added for retail therapy at a distance, although sadly horses weren't part of the deal. <laughs> Nothing to see here, move along. Happis Island got a long-awaited partial revamp, although as you'll soon see this was subject to change. There was an ox mask for the Lunar New Year, which means we only have to wait until 2026 for a horse one, and OG streamers were getting their turn on the Twitch drop gravy train, which led to the highlight of the month, year, and if you ask me, game, because after seven years, Rust finally got a pie. Rock skill, which although inedible can be force fed to other players. Development was starting to really heat up in March, unfortunately so was the OVH data centre in Strasbourg. Whoopsie! And so quite a few blueprints were wiped before their time, mine included. Always back up your data. The fret rants at Lynn finally opened to the public this month, and work carts threatened to make getting around a whole lot easier. Fortunately, someone decided to model it on the London Underground system, and the staff were just as helpful. The Rust console beta finally started, so the spam messages switched from Win console to Gib Key for PS4 beta please. And at long last, players were given a new way to waste all that spare scrap they had lying around as some new bandits arrived in town with a few less arms than usual. The long-neglected B-key got a job and now stands for body language, as in April gestures finally got added to Rust. Well, that really helped with communication, didn't it? More opportunities to unburden yourself of scrap arrived in the form of poker tables. I really was hoping we'd get top trumps, but... Then Ned Kelly was nerfed into the ground after you weren't allowed to ride horses in heavy armour anymore. I just love how realistic Rust is trying to be. Bravo! The HDRP backport, which wasn't actually HDRP but was a backport, got merged. Basically the game development equivalent of imitation brick wallpaper, and with it not just a lot of new textures, but changes to monuments too, because some of those people from January were still playing. The old junkyard was scrapped, and a new one with a magnet crane and shredder was introduced. Imagine, a seaside minigame where the crane actually picks things up and you get to destroy the prizes. What's not to like? Remember I said Happis was subject to change? Well, thanks to the backport it was shelved because now it needed to be completely redone. No, if only they'd known that in advance. Oh, and Nvidia Reflex got added, which, let's face it, still won't help you. 
Keep your friends close and your enemies in your contacts. This and more was all now possible thanks to yet another layer of situational awareness that was slapped on in June. Look, if I have a problem remembering who you are, then it's your fault for being forgettable. Wires got colours. A demo shot system was added for content creators. Rust Plus was upgraded so being raided could trigger Alexa to execute Order 66. And the animals got yassified, which is good because the old ones looked pretty jarring when they stood in front of the imitation brick wallpaper. DLC time. 17 loosely connected things, many but not all of which make a noise. All yours for about $15. But at least your IP address gets leaked for free when you use custom internet radio. Oh, no, wait, they took that out. A new wounded state let players crawl around like idiots whilst wounded, rather than just lie there like idiots. Bunker entrances for the train tunnels were added in the countryside, which is exactly where I like to keep mine. Birds would sometimes fly out of trees when you hit them, and Nvidia DLSS was added to squeeze a bit more juice out of your potatoes. Rust's empty oceans were given some much needed depth when the underwater update splashed down this month. Now the sea had so much life in it, it could give a probiotic yoghurt a run for its money. Except a yoghurt doesn't usually try to turn your leg into a flute. As well as sharks, there were underwater labs to explore, submarines to explore them with, torpedoes, spear guns and fishing. Side tunnels were added to the train network and because Happis Island was languishing in concept limbo, a community map competition was held with Gravis Island being chosen for use on some officials for a bit. Compared to August, September's update was a little dry. There was the usual nerfing of stuff that was added last month, with the surface torpedo being the victim this time, a new tackle shop at the fishing village, the ability to gesture and shoot people underwater, but not at the same time, and RGB integration for Razer slash SteelSeries peripherals, because staring at your keyboard to figure out what's going on is such a good idea. Facepunch finally listened to the community and added missions. What do you mean you didn't ask for that? Well, one of you must have done. We got camper modules too, though. Look! And don't give me all that stuff about indoor barbecues and carbon monoxide. There was a big quality of life push this month. Loads of stuff that I've since blotted out of my memory. I'm sure I did a video about it somewhere. And at the end of the month, the seasonal tat was actually rather imaginative, with your very own pet meat jigsaw that you could boss around being the highlight. The quest to turn as much usable land over to monuments continued with the addition of abandoned desert bases and Rockety McRocket Face, so that now not only could you offline raid, but you could do it from the other side of the map, you cowards. Like last year's spacesuit, a new Nomad Hazzy skin was released, although from the promotional video you'd think it was a whole new game mode. It is rather nice, mind. This coincided, coincidentally, with the release of a permanent item store where you could now buy certain items all year round without any hope of ever being able to trade them. And Charitable Rust managed to raise well over $100,000 at the last count. Well done, chat. The Excavator got a few buffs this month, greater output, a smaller footprint, more chance to spawn and a terminal that lets you call in airdrops. Please start using the excavator, please. Forests became denser once again because you shouldn't see the wood for the trees sometimes and first person spectate mode was added for admins, cinematographers and people who just like to watch. Because December is usually the best time for that yearly bath, blueprints were once again pinned down and forcibly wiped clean and there was a new snowman hat plus a boomer firework with a programmable pattern which will never be abused, right? Right? So what did we learn? Well, even though the game's now older than most of the player base, there are still plenty of people out there who haven't played it yet, and that's probably for the best. But in all seriousness, I don't know many eight-year-old games being this actively developed. So what's coming this year? Well, Happis Island might finally get finished, there are snowmobiles coming, plus Arctic bases, travelling between certain servers looks likely, and you can bet there'll be some kind of DLC pack. We might even find out what that camel robot does, and hopefully there are plenty more spelling errors. But what are you looking forward to? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this look back on the year that will now become known as 2021, and if you're thinking, why didn't you mention... Well, the answer is I did it to annoy you. But maybe you can let me know what the highlight of the year was for you! 
and what new thing you were most happy about, or even what you hated, I don't care. Leave me a like if you liked, a dislike if you didn't, they don't really matter now I guess, but why not. Sub to the channel and do all the other things I usually ask you to do, can't be bothered to list them all again, I'll probably catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk.